So this next video is on separation compilation. And separation compilation is a way for us to be able to organize our code. But not only does it allow us to organize our code, it also gives us the way to make our code reusable. You know, up until now, uh, we've, we've developed classes, right? We made classes and we said class A and then uh, we made class B and 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 we did all, we did all of this inside of our main right this is all inside of our main.cpp file right and and that works we can use our classes inside our main but we can actually only use our classes inside our main when we declare and define our our classes this way and that makes it difficult when it's when you decide that hey you know what class B will work really well in a different project um so then you have to go to your main.cpp, you have to find all the code for class B, you have to copy that, and then you paste it into your, to your new assignment. And you keep doing that over and over again every time you decide that you need to, uh, you want to reuse your code. Well, if you do separation compilation, then uh, you can actually reuse code very simply, uh, very easily. So, so what se separation compilation does is it allows you to just have a, a file, well, actually two files, right? You have a .h and a .cpp, and these two files are dedicated to one class, right? We dedicate this to one class. And so now if we ever needed to include our class in another file, all we have to do is just include this H file. And, and we don't have to worry about sifting through our main.cpp and finding some old code and pasting it into another file. And so the way we do that is uh, we create uh, two files, uh, .h, right? Our .h is going to be our header file. And this file pretty much contains all of our declarations. Right, so we would de we would declare our class, or if we were doing functions, we would declare everything inside this file. The .cpp file is considered our source file, and this file will have all the implementation. All right, so uh, so here's an example of uh, creating a header file. Uh, if I was going to do class, uh, let's say we're going to do class B. So inside my header file, I'll have class B. And then I, you know, declare all my public functions. So, you know, I have my B constructor. Um, you know, let's say I have a, you know, get B as a, as a, uh, Accessor function, and let's just say b is an integer. Uh, you know, I can have my, my private variables, and let's just say I have a private variable that's type int and it's named b. All right, this would be a declaration of the class, it's just declaring what is in the class, but it doesn't not actually have the implementation of the class. Now, in our cpp file, that's where we will start implementing, right? And so in order to be able to let the compiler know that we are implementing uh, files inside of our, excuse me, uh, functions, our, our member functions, our constructors that are inside our class B, we have to use what is called the scope resolution operator. And the scope resolution operator is simply two semicolons, right? So we will say the scope is going to be B, right? Because that's the name of our class. Then we use our scope resolution operator. And that means now we can access stuff that's within the scope of B, right? It's what's in between the two curly braces. So if I wanted to implement my constructor, then I just say the scope of B and then B which is the name of my constructor. 
and then here I can put all my code, right? And then if I wanted to implement my get B uh, accessor function, then I would just say int, and then I'll say this is the scope of B, right? It's the get B function, and then I can implement all the code that is in B. And for whatever reason, I froze for a second, right? So that is how we would uh, do se file separation compilation. Now, you're probably asking, why can't I just put the, the declaration on top and then just put my implementation on the bottom and just put it all in one file? And the reason is because when you... When you include files uh, inside of your inside of your main.cpp, for instance, let's say I'm including our IO stream. When I include IO stream inside my main.cpp file, then it's actually copying all the file declarations for IO stream and it's and it's importing it into my C, my main.cpp file. And so if if it if it were to impl if it were to put in the declaration as well as the implementation, then if I ever need to make changes to the IO stream library then I would actually have to recompile, right? I would have to recompile my program. Uh, let's let's just take a look at this simple class, right? If I was to go and create a main.cpp, and let's say I was going to include include my class B, um, and the way we include our files, if it's our own personal library, we include it by uh, using double quotes and then the name of the file, uh, followed by uh, another double quote. Whereas when we're including a built-in library, we use the, uh, the greater than and less than to uh, import our library. So let's say that I was going to include my class B. What the compiler will do is it will actually take a copy of what's inside of the H file. And it's going to paste it inside of our inside of our main.cpp file. Right? So if, if we had everything inside just one file, that means that it will actually go and it will take this code as well. So let me copy this. And it will also paste it will also uh, put that inside of our file, right? So now we have all this code in our file. Well, what happens if I need to make changes to the definitions of my constructor, for example? If I had to do that, then I would have to go and recompile this whole program, right? I would have to, I would have to recompile my program because it's actually copying the code inside of the file. So that means that I can't make changes to my program without recompiling my program. And that can be a problem if you're making really, really large programs or, or programs that are uh, important for business practices where they, they, they can't be down for long periods of time. So if you put them in separate files and you just have the class declaration without the implementation, then you can actually go make changes to the implementation without having to recompile your program because the program already knows that these particular classes exist. So that is the reason why we want to put them in separate files. So now, remember I just said that it copies the, the code into your into your main.cpp file. But what happens if uh, what happens if inside my B file I was to call 
Let's say I was to include include IO stream. What if I needed to use the IO stream to implement my B class? Now, if I was to include IO stream inside my B class, and from what I just said, that when you use include, it copies the code in to the file. That means that I'm including IO stream. Then I'm including B.H, where B.H includes IO stream. So that means I actually will include IO stream twice. And what happens when you include, when you have uh, functions or, or uh, classes that have the same name uh, inside of one program? There's, there's ambiguity, right? There's ambiguity and the compiler doesn't know which one to choose and therefore it will pretty much not compile. So the way we can fix that is that in our header file, we can write a snippet of code that will only include the, the code if it was not included already prior. And the way we do that is we use a directive called if in def, right? And this stands for if not defined. Right? And then there's also a directive called define. And define will actually just, uh, it will pretty much make a definition of something. It will, it will, it will create a, a uh, identifier, right? Make a definition. And I was just going to say it will make a identifier. Right, and this identifier will be something that's stored in the compiler and the compiler will make note of this new identifier. And then uh, if we want to we want to say that our scope is closed, we just use end if. Right? So I like to think of if in def and end if as our curly braces, right? So if in def is going to be the beginning of our block of code, right? So we say if in def, and then we have to give identifier name. So I'm just gonna call it identifier name. So we say if there's nothing in the program that is defined as identifier name, then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna define something that's called identifier name. Right, and then, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our code. So I will put my class B here, and then I'll write all the declarations of class B. Right, and then I say, okay, this block of code is over, so I end it with end if. So now what this is saying, if there's if there's not an identifier name named identifier name, then let's go ahead and create. Right, so the first thing we're saying. If there's not an identif if there is not an identifier named identifier name, then go ahead and create an identifier name identifier name. And then go ahead and put this code inside of your program. All right? And then stop here. At this after this point, stop here. So this is going to be the scope of our code. All right? So so this is basically saying, if it's not defined, then go ahead, define it, and then go ahead and put in this code all the way to this point. So now what will happen is if I try to include, if I try to include my b.h file, then the first time I try to include it, it will say, if not defined, identifier name and the compiler will say oh yeah you know what there's nothing called identifier name that's been defined so then it will go into this scope and then it will create an identifier named identifier name and then it will add this code right so if somewhere else in my program there there comes another include and that's asking for b.h as well, 
then it's going to come back to that file, right? And this file starts off saying if there's not an identifier named identifier name, then move into this code. But when it checks it now, because the first time identifier name was defined, then when it checks this, it's just going to skip over this. And then that will stop us from accidentally putting the same code twice inside of our program. All right, and so that is pretty much separation compilation. Thank you very much.